Live from WSLS, this is 10 News at 6, working for you. Getting right to our top story tonight, coronavirus relief could soon be in your bank account. Good evening and thanks for joining us for 10 News at 6. I'm Lindsay Ward. I'm John Carlin. With the ink of this pen, that would be the pen right there, <laughs> A $1,400 check is headed your way, along with nearly $2 trillion worth of relief. The American Rescue Plan includes more than $28 billion for small business aid, $14 billion for vaccine distribution, $25 billion for rent assistance, and also a child tax credit expansion. This historic legislation is about rebuilding the backbone of this country and giving people in this nation, working people, middle-class folks, uh, People who built the country a fighting chance. The bill passed along party lines with no Republican support. Virginia Democratic Senator Tim Kaine calls it a win for the Commonwealth. He said in part, it has been a painfully long, dark year, but light is on the horizon. Tonight, the president says he'll address the relief and how far we've come over the past year during a primetime address. You can watch his speech right here on WSLS 10 starting at 8 o'clock. Now, this year of ups and downs has completely changed our lives. And 10 News reporter McKinley Struther is live tonight after talking with one businessman who's had a unique experience. So, McKinley, you also heard from Governor Northam on this as well. I did, John and Lindsay. And tomorrow marks one year since Governor Northam placed Virginia under a state of emergency, a decision that was brought on by a raging and deadly virus that changed many of our approaches to things like how we learn, how we communicate, and even how we work. And in a flash, Adam Barnes' work came to an end. And when we're in the dark, um, not knowing what the government was going to do and those type of things, it was really difficult. Like so many other working Virginians, Barnes found himself without work as the coronavirus pandemic became our new reality. We've learned a lot. Um, are there things that we could have done differently? Uh, probably. Governor Ralph Northam led the fight here in the Commonwealth and acknowledges we all went in blind. Restaurants closed, schools went virtual, events became a thing of the past. I think closing down from the IRS even to the post office, uh, it was really hard to get answers. Barnes is a professional photographer shooting celebrity weddings for artists like Virginia native and rapper Pusha T. He is his only employee and struggled getting unemployment and business assistance. Probably mid to late summer before I started receiving some of that uh, assistance. A year later, things are slowly opening with vaccines rolling out. Good news for Barnes and a sign of hope, according to Governor Northam. Further down into later this year and into 2022, it looks like it'll be quite a busy year. If we all continue to work together, I really think that we can put the pandemic behind us and get back to our normal lives. Under the current state order, outdoor entertainment venues can host up to 1,000 people. Indoors is capped at 250. Governor Ralph Northam did tell me yesterday that if our downward trend continues, he may loosen some of those restrictions as early as next month. Reporting live this evening on McKinley Struther, 10 News, working for you. The governor was in Salem today as part of his statewide tour, pushing for in-person learning. School leaders took him into classrooms, the auto shop, culinary kitchen, and construction zone as they renovate the building. The governor says he recognizes Salem as a pioneer in the push to safely get students back to class. Tonight, a telling statistic of the toll the pandemic has taken. From March 2020 to April 2020, the Roanoke Blacksburg Regional Airport tells us it saw a 97% drop in passenger traffic. 10 News reporter Alexis Davila joins us live tonight. Alexis, one year later, has the travel industry seen any recovery? Well, airport leaders tell me they're they're relatively close to their normal numbers once again, a sign that the travel industry may be coming having a slow comeback with fewer flights and empty parking lots at the airport. Business travel went from 60% down to about 5 to 10% since COVID-19 hit. Smaller touring businesses like Roanoke Tours Incorporated ended up shutting its doors completely after 20 years. President Ernie Dale was forced to refund people out of pocket and take out a 30-year loan. It was scary because I did not think I would be in debt at that age. So, yeah, that was a very scary moment. 
visit Virginia Blue Ridge tells me more than 8,000 people in the tourism industry either lost their job or had their hours cut back. However, with sporting events returning, VBR says it may just be the push they need to make a comeback themselves. Live in Roanoke, Alexis Davila, 10 News, working for you. Happening right now, the New River Health District is holding a state of COVID-19 in the New River Valley. You're looking at the panel of five local leaders weighing in on where the region stands from the virus's spread to vaccines and mental health. Tonight on 10 News at 11, we'll break down what you need to know about the Valley's progress. Tonight, we now know how police were able to find the body of a murdered teen that was missing for more than seven years. According to WTOP, Alexis Murphy's killer told investigators where she was. As we've reported, Randy Taylor is serving two life sentences for her murder. She was last seen in August of 2013 at a Lovingston gas station. Authorities found her body in Nelson County in December of 2020. We now know the names of the people who died in yesterday's boating accident on Claytor Lake. Authorities say 67-year-old Farron Gardner and, from Hillsville and 70-year-old Reginald Sizemore from Dublin were killed yesterday. Investigators say alcohol was not a factor. And a community that's been left with questions for more than three decades. The longer it goes, the harder it gets. She deserves for it to be solved. The local cold case that has fresh eyes looking for a killer. I'm Brooke Leonard in Greensboro and coming up in sports, we've got highlights from the ACC men's basketball corner finals, Virginia versus Syracuse. And you're looking at a live picture from our Martinsville New College Institute sky cam right over downtown Martinsville. We have clouds, but off in the distance, we certainly have nice sunshine. We'll let you know, though, when clouds are going to be the norm across the region coming up in your forecast. Your donations from Roanoke Valley Gives Day are already making an impact. The day well exceeded its $900,000 goal, and people donated, in fact, more than $1.1 million to more than 140 nonprofits. Angels of Assisi is using some of that money to help this pig. Yeah, the donations go to the Center's Biscuit Fund, which helps animals in need, and they say Millie was abandoned and her legs were zip-tied together. She's now recovering at the Harmony Farm Sanctuary right now. An investigation is underway after a German shepherd was found dead in a crate dumped on the side of a Rockbridge County road. The Sheriff's Department posted these photos on Facebook asking for anyone with information to come forward. They say it happened on Rafine Road back in January. Investigators have worked this case for weeks now, but they don't have any new leads. We know the dog's death was unnatural. Uh, it was caused by someone. And, and that's what's really unimaginable to us at this point is we don't know why someone would do this. So if you have any information, we have the number to call at WSLS.com. Who killed a Covington woman more than 30 years ago? The work one woman is doing to crack this cold case. It's one of the oldest cold cases in our area, leaving an entire community to question who killed Aggie Albert. New at 6 tonight, 10 News reporter Randy Schroeder is working for you to break down some new efforts to answer that question. Becky Beckstoffer was especially close to her aunt, Aggie Albert, a loving woman of faith who was very active in her Covington neighborhood. It was her second home. She spent most of her or a good portion of her time at the church. The entire community was turned upside down when Albert's body was found right outside her church in July of 1992. Since then, her family and investigators have been looking for answers. The longer it goes, the harder it gets. And I ha I'm optimistic, but not confident that it'll ever be solved. A lot has changed since then, including social media. So in one last push, Beckstoffer started a new Facebook page in hopes of getting any information about what happened to Aggie that night. I have almost 600 followers and I've gotten a lot of good information, a lot of feedback, a lot of interest in it. The case was quickly turned over to state police, but it has become increasingly hard to investigate. DNA found at the scene has been tested and resubmitted a number of times with no hits. Potential witnesses have been hard to track down because of the amount of time that's passed. They just don't have the right information to solve the case. 
but it's, it's not because they're not trying. Beck Stauffer has been taking the charge on her aunt's case for more than two decades now and says no piece of information is too small. She and her family will never stop fighting for justice. I just feel like that she deserves for it to be solved. Um, and that person may be doing it again. And that's one of my biggest fears is somebody else is going through this. In Covington, Annie Schroeder, 10 News, working for you. If you have any information about the case, we have the number to call at WSLS.com. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. For about the next 45 minutes or so, we still have a red flag warning in effect for these areas shaded in this pink color. This is for the Highlands areas in and around Lynchburg and also for parts of South Side. We've had a warm air mass overhead today. It's been breezy at times. The air is dry. The ground is dry. We also have a statewide burn ban through April the 30th from uh, around noon to about four o'clock every day. So just bear that in mind. Let's show you the satellite and radar composite and you'll notice that we do have rain to the north. Cannot rule out a shower into Highland County. As a matter of fact, the northern tip of Highland County may be dealing with a light shower right now. This is our next weather maker out to the west, and this is what's going to provide us a chance for some spotty showers as we head into the day on Friday. March daily rainfall. We haven't seen much. The first of the month we had a little bit of rain, but we've been dry since. 10 st straight dry days here across southwest central and south side Virginia for some of us, perhaps not all of us, but for some of us that will change tomorrow. Here's a look at future tracker by 7 a.m. on Friday. We will have a couple of showers around, especially into the Highlands, New River Valley and Mountain Empire. As the day goes on, the chance for some rain may increase a touch. So as we head into the afternoon, widely scattered showers will be around, but this little piece of energy should really start to diminish the rain chances as we head, say, towards, say, dinner time tomorrow. And then as we head into Saturday, as we head into Sunday, the front's going to be just south of us towards the Carolinas. I cannot rule out a stray shower Saturday and Sunday, but the majority of us are going to be dry here this weekend under partly to mostly cloudy skies. Your weekend forecast showing highs on Friday around 70, 63 Saturday down to the upper 50s on Sunday. Few showers on Friday. We're just, I think, going to be seeing more clouds and sunshine Saturday and Sunday. Again, a stray shower can't be ruled out, but most of us are dry Saturday and Sunday. We're going to be watching a big league winter storm producing a ton of snow in places like Wyoming and Colorado this weekend. That's what's going to bring us an even better shot for some precipitation, mainly rain, as we head Monday into Tuesday of next week. Temperatures right now 61 in Hot Springs, 65 Covington, 70 Lynchburg, 73 Roanoke, 70 Danville, 67 in Blacksburg. For tonight, partly cloudy this evening. May see a little more cloud cover rolling in later tonight. Overnight lows 49 to 56. Three days zone by zone forecast. Middle 60s in the NRV Friday, mid to upper 50s Saturday and Sunday. For the Highlands, you're going to see some scattered showers Friday. You're going to be for the most part dry Saturday and Sunday. South side locations, lower 70s Friday, low to mid 60s Saturday and Sunday. For Lynchburg, you are looking at your best chance for widespread rain coming in Monday into Tuesday. St. Patrick's Day next Wednesday looks to be for the most part dry with another chance for rain on Thursday. And for the Roanoke Valley, your coldest day is going to be Monday. Highs only in the middle 40s but temperatures rebound into the 50s Tuesday through Thursday. John, Lindsay. All right, thank you, Jeff. We're just a few days away until spring, and that means you'll need to move your clock forward. Yeah, at least 15 states, including Virginia, have introduced legislation in recent years to make daylight saving time year-round. You will lose an hour of sleep on Saturday either way, but we are working for you to help ease that blow. You need to start tonight. Go to bed like 15 minutes earlier, get up 15 minutes earlier, and do that for the next few days. And so by the time the daylight savings time does occur, uh, you should be kind of acclimated to that time today. He suggests adults get seven to nine hours of sleep while kids get 10 to 12 hours. Abby? Week two, but show three, our player of the week rolled a lucky seven. Week two saw Lord Botetot enter Blue Ridge District play at William Fleming, and the Cavs unleashed their rolling ball of butcher knives in running back Hunter Rice. 
the Lord Botetot Sr. rolled behind a massive Cavaliers offensive line to the tune of 175 yards and five rushing scores. And Rice added a touchdown reception and a punt block for score to have his hand in seven touchdowns in Lord Botetot's 49-6 win over the Colonels. The Cavs have outscored their opponents 119-12 in a 2-0 start. And in doing so, we honor Hunter Rice as our Week 2 First and 10 Player of the Week. Two more high school games tonight. Pennsylvania County at Tunstall and at Gretna. Sergio Garcia leads the Players' Championship. He is at minus 7. ODAC basketball finals. I can tell you Lynchburg has defeated Roanoke 67-61. The men's final coming up tonight. Randolph-Macon at Lynchburg. <laughs> Everybody's okay. Everybody's good. Basketball, football, ex baseball. Ex what else? Except Golf? for Duke. Except for Duke. And, and I think everybody better get used to the fact we may be dealing with some more of that moving forward, if not in the ACC. So they, yeah, they had the a tournament. Then. There you go. Yeah. All right. Nightly news coming up next. We'll see you at 7.